Okay, so as you can see behind me, I've got the car complete. Unfortunately, I didn't film everything. Uh, some of my time lapse actually uh, wasn't recording or got deleted. Can't find it for some reason. But I uh, got everything put back together. Timing belt's on, Raiders back in. Uh, I kind of got the kink out of this hose here uh, by adjusting this hose up here. And then, you know, basically put everything back together. Um, some of the things I'm doing now, I just got finished uh, setting up the idle. Uh, if you look in the, the service manual, it tells you all the things you need to do. Started out with the throttle cable. I made sure that this uh, cable was um, basically you turn, there's two 14 millimeter nuts that hold it in place. You turn the back one, the one towards the rear of the car, you turn it all the way forward until you start to see the throttle just rock slightly, and then you turn it back uh, one and a half to two turns, and then you tighten it down, did that. And then I also picked up this um, Nissan data scan tool. Uh, kind of hard to see right here, but here it is. Nissan data scan tool. Picked that up um, so I could hook it up to the computer and kind of see what's going on in there. And I'll probably show you that in a minute. But uh, I used that to get a good gauge on the RPMs. And what I did was I looked, I followed whatever the service manual said. It said to unplug the... Uh, I think it's the idle air control valve and some other valve that's back here in the back, uh, which it's kind of hard to get to, but you know, it's way back here, way down here. So you unplug those, you set it at, I think it was 650. You set the RPM at 650 uh, by turning the little screw that's right here. There's a lot of videos online that show you that too. Uh, and then you plug those things back in and it should go back up to like, I think it was 800 something. So I did that and I used the uh, digital gauge on the uh, Nissan data scan tool to make sure that was right and then now what I'm doing is I'm basically just trying to fix a problem that I've been having for a really really long time even back when the car was non-turbo um, speedometer would cut in and out and the power steering would cut in and out and then like at, at like 60 miles an hour you'd feel the steering wheel kind of like shake sometimes um, so basically reading through the service manual what I think that probably is, it's probably something to do with either the vehicle speed sensor, the speedometer, or the power steering control unit. So uh, taking a look at some of those things and looking through the manual, doing my research. Um, there's a lot of stuff online, people saying like reflow the speedometer cluster, people saying change the vehicle speed sensor, uh, all kind of things. But really your first reference should always be the service manual. So what I'm gonna do first, is I'm gonna test my vehicle speed sensor because my gut kind of tells me that's probably what it is. So I'm gonna take a look at that. I've got two steps on how to do that. Um, one is an ohm check, and I think the other one is a voltage check. So I'm gonna do those two things. I've got the back of the car jacked up so I can get back there. And then after that, I'm gonna follow the troubleshooting guide that's in the service manual. So if you've never looked at the service manual, highly recommend if you're gonna be doing this stuff yourself, take a look at it. There's a lot of really good stuff in there. Troubleshooting steps. Uh, I think now that I have the Nissan data scan tool, uh, which gives you like real live feed information from the uh, ECU, I think that'll help a lot. And then with the service manual, I can kind of iron out all these little bugs, and get this car perfect, running perfect. So uh, I'll show you that real quick. All right, so uh, I was up underneath the car for a little bit. I had to fix a couple things. I actually had a water, slight water leak from those silicone hoses, the Z1 silicone hoses, because I guess they, when they heat cycle, you gotta tighten them or whatever. So I had to tighten them a little bit because they were dripping just a little bit. Also I had to tighten my exhaust, which I knew I had an exhaust leak somewhere because I could smell it, but now I know where it came from, the mid pipe that we put on. We just didn't have the um, bolts tightened. So I tightened that up real good. That I put on. Jonah. Yeah, John forgot to tie them. I also forgot to check, so it is what it is. Uh, so now I have these two wires tapped into the speed sensor. It says to check for continuity as you turn the steering wheel. So I'm turning the, the steering, steering wheel. wheel. Or the rear wheel. The wheels. The tires. So as I turn the tires, uh, the there should, it should, should go, go in and out of continuity. So 
because right now we're on ohms, not volts. So as I turn this thing, it does like, I do see it hit zero, and then I do see it hit point something, and then zero. I think that OL is just, it's getting a bad reading. So point two, point six, and then zero. And it gets a little reading, it pops in and out. So I think that means that this is good, but I'm gonna do the second check because there's actually two checks. Speed sensor signal check removed, speed sensor from transmission. Turn speedometer pinion to measure voltage across A and B. I am going to just start the car and then we're gonna see what we get from right here as I go high and low. So I'm gonna put it on voltage. I believe it's 12 volts DC. It's gonna be this one. And then I'm gonna start the car. Mr's not in gear. And the only reason I'm okay with doing this is because in the troubleshooting guide it actually tells you to do this um, in a couple spots. So, and we've got the back wheels off the ground, so we should be good. Yeah, it's not gonna go forward. All right. Let me get a start. Was turning? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really sketchy. Oh, I think what I had it on the wrong fifth? one. Yeah, I had it on the wrong one. getting voltage it would be lighting up right here too so it's nothing yeah so I think it's our speed sensor all right crisis you know what I'll do is I'll pull the sensor out and check it also that way to see if it's at it's definitely in gear it's spinning So I'll pull the speed sensor out, it's just one bolt, and then I'll do a check that I saw online where a guy hooked it up to a drill, spun it, and then checked to see if he was getting voltage. Since it's probably bad, I'm going to have to pull it out anyways, might as well pull it out and check it. Um, good news is I've already pre-ordered a speed sensor because that's what I thought it was. Um, so it'll be here, I think probably tomorrow, so that's good. Sweet. All right, real quick, I want to show you the Nissan data scan that we got. So it's really two things. It's uh, a PLM PLMS, uh, which I don't know what that stands for, uh, cable, which is this Nissan co consult interface. Plugs into your OBD. I think this is the 14-pin version. Um, it plugs into your laptop, and then we also have the Nissan data scan, um, the actual software. So once you get the drivers installed to get the cable to work, which was a challenge for me. This is Windows 11 and I had to do some weird stuff, but I finally got it to work. Um, all you gotta do is plug the cord in and you don't have to turn your car on, but I'm gonna turn my car on just to show you. See the numbers. Um, turn your car on. You hit connect. This thing will start talking. 
and then once all these functions light up it'll show you and I think probably the most useful one not data logging uh, let's close that out it's a data display right, so I think this is probably the most useful feature so far for me uh, my RPMs right here which I literally just adjusted it and was at 800 so I'm not sure why it's at 900 maybe it's just needs a warm up we'll see timing shows you it's at 15 your throttle position sensor is at 0.44 so you know it's good uh, then you can see all this other stuff water temps pretty useful one O2 sensors duty cycle injectors air fuel ratio base all that good stuff uh, not only can you see all that to help you figure out what's wrong but you can do a self diagnostic which really surprising to me that this thing says cold, uh, code 55 no faults because right now the speed sensor is completely unhooked so that makes me wonder if maybe Some that thing the, ain't working uh, great or whatever I yeah. don't know uh, and then there's also this thing right here which is um, active test this is pretty cool you can get in there and you can um, basically turn stuff on and off to see if it works like your fuel pump you can turn off the cylinder all kinds of cool stuff so pretty useful tool I think um, we're gonna probably use this a lot and I've already gotten a, a little bit of use out of it so and it's only the neat on the this the cable and the software I think it was like a hundred and fifty bucks or something like that from uh, Concept Z oh it still does that I think we have a backdrop Okay, can you zoom out where you can see my face, bro? But not my pores. Just zoom just back up a little bit. <laughs> okay, so I got the, this is the vehicle speed sensor. Ours kind of janky. Clip's broken. It's been uh, soldered together. This was the thing that last time it was just like finger twisted up or whatever. Um, so all you got to do is... Um, it tells you to put the pins right there and just spin it by hand. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this gear off and I'm gonna put it on a drill bit and spin it a little faster to see if we can't get some voltage out of it. Cause that's essentially what it does. It makes, makes it sends like on off, on off, like a small generator, a little voltage. So kind of making a weird noise, but yeah, we'll try that. We'll see what happens. All right, so I've got my speed sensor, I took the gear off, took the circ clip off, hooked it up, 12 volts DC, and got it on drill, so we'll give her a test. Yeah, that's really weird. I'm, I'll try switching the polarity to see if maybe, maybe I just got the polarity wrong. But like, it seems like it makes a couple volts at first, but then it goes out. down to zero. So should I spin it the other way? See if that makes a difference. I think the speed sensor doesn't work anymore. So I'm going to get the new one. We'll try that. That's where we're going to end this video today. That's it till next time.